Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Gales, and this is Exploring the Cellular Basis of Life screencast session number three. This screencast is going to be a very brief look at simple and complex cells. Let me remind you to make sure that you've got your cell biology packet with you and that you're ready to take down just a few notes. Primarily, you're going to be working on a Venn diagram as part of this screencast. Uh, so I'm going to go to the next slide right away and show you the learning targets. These are the things that you should be able to do as a consequence of having watched this. You should be able to identify four features common to all cells. No matter what kind of cell we're talking about, prokaryotic or eukaryotic, plant cell or animal cell, there are four features common to all cells. You should also be able to compare and contrast prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. You should be able to identify similarities and differences between them. Now, I'm going to reference a couple of pages in your packet as we go through this. Page 45 is a diagram uh, that shows features common to all cells, and page 47 is a Venn diagram. And I'm just going to jump out of the PowerPoint here just for a moment and go to the Venn diagram and help you get that set up. Uh, the Venn diagram on page 47 looks like this, and we're going to write down the the title for this one is going to be Simple and Complex Cells. All right, and on the left hand side, we're going to put down prokaryotic cells. And on the right, eukaryotic cells. Okay. Now, this screencast is going to consist primarily of a short video clip. While you watch the video clip, I want you to try to identify those structures that, they, that the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells would have in common and list those in that central area. If you can identify some, some characteristics that are just apply to prokaryotic cells, you're going to put that in the bubble on the left. And if you can find some characteristics that apply to only eukaryotic cells, you're going to put those on the right-hand side over here. Okay, and when we're done with the video, we'll be consulting page 45, which is this diagram, features common to all cells. You can look at that as the video is playing. Okay, but again, as the video plays, just try to fill in some information here on your Venn diagram. So I'm going to shift over to that and get the video started. And here we go. Living cells are formally categorized into two groups, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. But no matter how different, cells share some common characteristics. Every cell contains cytoplasm, a watery gel that makes up its bulk. The cytoplasm is composed of cytosol, the fluid component of cells, and any organelles. The cytoplasm circulates around the interior of the cell. A membrane surrounds the cytoplasm, composed mainly of two layers of phospholipids. The membrane is full of pores and channels that allow the cell to take in and expel various molecules. All cells contain genetic material in the form of DNA and ribosomes that play a vital role in the manufacture of proteins. Ribosomes are very small bead-like structures that can float in the cytoplasm or attach themselves to interior membranes. The location of the DNA is the primary difference between the two groups of cells. In a prokaryotic cell, the DNA is bunched together in a nucleoid region, but floats free in the cytoplasm. In a eukaryotic cell, the DNA is physically separated from the cytoplasm by a membrane. This structure is called the nucleus, and its presence is what determines whether a cell is prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Bacteria are the best known form of prokaryotic cells. Because they can live in a wide range of environments, they are one of the most widespread forms of life on the planet. Another form of prokaryotic cell is known as archaea. These prokaryotes differ from bacteria in the chemical composition of some cellular structures, and they are found mostly in extreme environments, including these hot springs in Yellowstone National Park. Prokaryotes are small enough that they can rely on diffusion alone to transport internal materials. 
molecules in the cytoplasm float freely, and they will easily encounter other molecules to undergo reactions and keep the cell alive. Eukaryotes are much larger than prokaryotes, so they need more organization to stay alive. Eukaryotes have organelles, internal membrane-bound compartments. Each organelle serves a specific function in the cell, from molecule storage to energy production. The largest structure is the nucleus, which contains the cell's DNA. To fit inside the nucleus, the DNA is wrapped around proteins. One of the cell's primary functions is to manufacture proteins from the code contained in the DNA. First, the code is transcribed within the nucleus from the DNA into RNA. Then the RNA travels into the cytoplasm, where it encounters a ribosome. The ribosome translates the code in the RNA into a protein using amino acids floating in the cytoplasm. Some of these proteins get carried to their destination in the cell, and others enter the endoplasmic reticulum. Located right outside the nucleus, the endoplasmic reticulum is an organelle composed of a series of membranes. Proteins that are leaving the cell or going to the outer membrane are chemically modified here and sent to the Golgi apparatus. A series of flattened organelles, the Golgi apparatus further modifies the proteins and sends them to their final destinations. Protein production is the main function of many organelles, but not all of them. Eukaryotic cells contain microtubules and microfilaments that support the cell and provide pathways that allow molecules to move from one part of the cell to another. The division of labor in eukaryotic cells is the key to their survival, and this has allowed them to work together in larger multicellular organisms. Did you know? Scientists theorize that modern eukaryotes evolved from a symbiotic relationship between different prokaryotes. This theory states that some organelles were originally bacteria that entered other ancient cells, but did not cause infection and were not digested. Over time, this relationship became so ingrained that now larger cells can't survive without these organelles. All right, now the uh, end of the video clip that you just saw talked about how over time uh, certain smaller cellular elements joined with larger cells um, and they became cooperative uh, in the sense that the larger cell was in some way benefiting from that relationship. Actually, both organisms or both cells were, were benefiting. That is a theory that's called endosymbiotic theory. It's one of the major theories in cell biology. Uh, and in one of the coming screencasts, uh, either Mr. Workman and I will talk to you a little bit about endosymbiotic theory and the evidence that supports it. Okay, so you've got your Venn diagram you produced during the video. Um, you should have some things that you see that they have in common. Hopefully you found some, some aspects that are related just to prokaryotic cells. Certainly there was quite a bit there about just eukaryotic cells. Now one final thing I wanted to point out here on this uh, image that you have, also looking at, at page 45, uh, in your packet, it's the same, essentially the same slide. Um, prokaryotic cell on the left, eukaryotic cell on the right. One, one important difference that is is evident here when you look at the size scales. Uh, the unit that you see here is micrometer or micrometer. That's a millionth of a meter. So here, prokaryotic cells tend to be between a tenth and ten micrometers long, whereas eukaryotic cells tend to be between ten and a hundred micrometers long. Um, Kind of interesting, and this will lead into something we'll talk about later. Some of the major organelles inside the eukaryotic cell are roughly the same size as prokaryotic cells. All right, so please make sure that you've got your Venn diagram completed for class. There's really no notes at this point that you needed to take from this screencast, but make sure you have your Venn diagram ready. And uh, when we get back together in class, we'll be talking about it a little bit. Okay, we'll see you next time in biology.